What's going on? This is your man, Jamel Adams, coming to you with another episode of Kingdom Talk. Listen, on today's episode, we are going to be talking about how you can get answers to your prayers. This has got to be one of the most asked questions from followers of Christ Jesus is, how do I go to God in a way that makes him want to answer my prayers? And today, we're going to touch on that. Real quick though, before we get into the word, as always, I want to thank everybody for checking out the videos. I appreciate all the comments. If you are new to Kingdom Talk, listen, Kingdom Talk is a Bible-based channel. We talk about kingdom related things we talk about what it means to be a christian how to live this life man this life is hard to be a christian and i believe that we need to do it together and this is my way of throwing in chipping in helping to build the body and so if you're new to kingdom talk listen check out some of the videos on the channel if you like what you see hit that subscribe button down there new videos come out every week but like I said, I want to jump right into it, man. Today we're going to talk about how to get your prayers answered. This is something that I've struggled with myself, um, prayer. I have to find that it's one of the hardest uh, spiritual weapons that we have to wield. And that's just taking time to come before God in prayer. Listen, if that's something that you guys struggle with as well, because I'm sure it's not something that I just struggle with myself. If it's something that you struggle with also, then leave a little comment down there. Let us know. That way we can pray your strength in this and you can pray for my strength because I certainly believe that it's something that we all need to be growing in. Paul says to pray without ceasing. And so um, pray for me and I'll pray for you. But what I want to do today is I want to take you into the gospel of Mark chapter 1. And I want to show you the attitude or the presentation that moves the heart of God. See, because for me, when I go to God in prayer, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to move his heart earnestly. I'm trying to move his heart um, so that it moves his hand according to his will in my life. Um, and so I'm constantly trying to make sure the posture that I come to God in is correct. And I think in the Gospel of Mark, uh, Mark has shown us a true posture that moves the heart of God. Um, if we take a look at the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, and we start at verse 40, the Word of God says that, And a man with leprosy came to Jesus, imploring him. And so I want to stop there real quick. As we break this passage down, first we see that, one, the man had leprosy. And I don't have time to go into what all that means and what the spiritual, excuse me, the uh, uh, spiritual principles and, 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 and principles behind that are. But let's just say leprosy was one of the worst diseases that you could have had at that time. It was a disease that ravished your body. It was a disease that not only separated you from society, but it was a disease that separated you from God. If you had leprosy as a Jewish person, you weren't allowed to go into the temple to offer sacrifices. And so it was a separation not only from society because leprosy was heavily contagious, but it was also a separation from God. And so this, this man that had leprosy was going through it. He was suffering. He was in pain and he was hurting. And the word of God says that he came to Jesus imploring him. He came in desperation because of his current situation. He came in desperation because he knew that there was nothing that he could do for himself. I'm sure, um, you know, uh, he's tried other things. You've tried other things. I know I've certainly have tried other things. But you get to a point where, like this man with leprosy, you get to a point where you're completely out of options. And you come to God imploring him in pure desperation. David, the king, said that God will never turn away from a broken and contrite heart. That's the posture that we need to begin when we come to God. We need to come in desperation knowing and understanding that 
There's nothing that we can do to solve the situation ourselves. Only God can. There's nothing that we can do to make the situation better. Only God can make it better. Now, as we move on through through the verses, he says, The man with leprosy came to Jesus, imploring him and kneeling down. So, first he came in desperation, but then he came kneeling down. This is a sign of reverence, a sign of, of, of respect for who God is. See, a lot of times when people come to God in prayer, they come with a heart demanding something of God. And one of the first things that we need to remember is that God is a king. And even on an earthly plane, when you go into a kingdom and you present yourself before a king, you come with a reverential spirit, meaning you come with an air of respect, knowing that how you behave in the courts of this king are going to determine how he relates to you. And so this leper, this, this leper is teaching us that when we come to God, we need to come with a reverential spirit, knowing and understanding who God is. He is a king. And when we come, we need to come with respect. We need to come honoring him. We need to come on our knees, understanding that we can't do it ourselves. We need him to do it for us, and only he can do it for us. And so it's that air of desperation, but it's also coming, understanding who you're presenting your offer before. The God of heaven and earth, the king of all the universe. And so next we see, as we read on, that after he kneeled to him, he said to him, if you are willing. So first off, I want you to understand that by him saying that to Christ, if you are willing, it wasn't him questioning God's ability to be able to do what he was about to ask him to do. He already knew that he could do it. That's why he came to him. By him saying, if you are willing, this was a humble submission before God, because God answering your prayers has nothing to do with your prayers. It has to do with, is God willing? Is what you're asking him to do according to his will? Let me give you an idea or an example of what I'm talking about. You know, a lot of times we pray for people that are sick, people that have cancer, or people that are in pain, and we don't realize that sometimes that situation or that ordeal that that person is going through is according to the will of God, that God is allowing their situation or circumstance to take place so that he is glorified by that. And so when he's saying, if you are willing, he understands that when we come to God in desperation, when we come to God with reverence, that even though we come in that posture, and in that spirit, the reality of the matter is, if what we're asking for does not line up with the will of God, then we may not get the result that we're looking for. And so he's asking, if you are willing, Lord, if this is according to your will, this is a sign of submission. It's a, it's a sign of humility, knowing that the only way this happens is if it's according to the will of God. So, after he says, if you are willing, the leper then continues. He says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And so, again, what we see here is that when he was asking him, if you are willing, again, it wasn't a question of God's ability, Jesus' ability to heal him. Because his very next words were, you can make me clean. So, to him, he fully believe in God's ability to answer his prayer. He fully believed by faith in God's ability to make him clean. And so when we come to God in prayer, we have to come with a faith that fully believes in God's ability to answer the request that we're placing before him. In the book of Hebrews, I believe it is, the word of God says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so when you come to God in prayer, in desperation, with reverence, 
with praying according to his will and his heart, you also have to come with full faith and belief in God's ability to answer your prayer and God's ability to bring it to fruition. I love what the leper says. He says, I know you can make me clean. He had full belief in Jesus' ability to answer his request. Next, he says to Jesus, he says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Well, what he does is he's acknowledging his need. He's acknowledging his need. He's making this personal. He's not talking about all of these different things that we begin to do in prayer, we begin to rattle off all these different things. And in and, 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 and Matthew, I believe, chapter 6, he says, you don't pray like the Gentiles do. The Gentiles, they just start muttering off things. He says, your father knows what you need. So when you come to God, you're coming to your father. You can just be real and speak from your heart. And he says, if you are willing, Lord, you can make me clean. You can. He acknowledged his need. Make me clean. Next we see that this was a, a, a very specific prayer that he was asking him. He didn't say, bless me, God, with X, Y, Z. He didn't say, bless me with this, that, or the third. It was a very specific prayer. He said, make me clean. See, when you come to God in prayer, make sure your prayer is very specific. Make sure when you come to God in prayer that the thing that you need is the thing that you're presenting to your father. He says, if you can, you can make me clean. It was personal. And then one thing I want you to also see is that in this prayer, it was very short. He had a need. He was desperate to be cleansed so that he can join his family, so that he can go back into the temple and make sacrifices to God, right? So his desperation was on overload, but still his prayer was specific and it was personal. And the posture of it was with desperation and reverence and understanding who God was, but it was still a very brief prayer, right to the point. What that teaches us is our prayers don't need to be long-winded. Our prayers don't need to go on for hours and hours and hours the more you talk, the more you think that you're going to get God's attention. It's not the way it works. When you come to God with a heart that's pure, he will hear you. How do I know this? Because if you look at verse uh, 41, moved with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. It didn't take much words from this leper. It took a desperate heart. It took reverence. It took understanding who he was going before. Understanding that he was going before the Most High, if you are willing. But most importantly, I believe that he went with faith. When you read through the Gospels, one thing that is clear is that Jesus always marveled. He was always moved by people that came with faith, that utterly, utterly believed what he could do. And it says that he was moved with compassion for this man and said, I am willing, be cleansed. And in verse 42, to me, this is so incredible. It says, immediately the leprosy left him. Immediately the man was completely healed by the word of God. See, when you go to God with the right heart, on your knees, and by, and by on your knees, I don't mean that you have to get on your knees in that posture. That's just a posture of the heart. When you go with the reverential heart, understanding that you're going before the God of the universe, and you pray according to his will, not according to your heart, not according to your desires, not according to what you want, but Father, if it be your will, and I know that you can do this, God. Cleanse me. That's the prayer that God is moved by. And when God moves in answer to your prayer, again, I love verse 42. It says, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. See, when God answers your prayer, immediately 
You feel it. You see it. You know it. When the word of God touches your heart. Does God answer prayers? Yes, he does. If you've been praying for something for so, so long, beloved, and you have not yet received an answer to that prayer, let me ask you, are you praying in a way that moves God with compassion? Are you praying according to the will of God or according to your own will? When you pray according to the will of God, he's moved and he answers. Examine your heart. And God will answer your prayers. Again, this is your man Jamel with another episode of Kingdom Talk. Y'all be blessed until next time. We'll check you out then.